Good morning, folks. We are calling to order the August meeting of the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. I'm Harold Cannon. I'll be overseeing the meeting today. Uh, Commissioner Watson, would you be so kind to lead us in the invocation and pledge? If everybody can and if you're able, please stand. Bow our heads. Our dear Heavenly Gracious Father, I want to thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. I pray, O oh Lord, for your protection for the people of the agency, the men and women. I pray, dear Heavenly Gracious Father, for your protection on this nation as we go through the struggles. We pray for wisdom today that we will seek your will in our, de in our decisions and that your will will be done. We ask this prayer in Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Watson, thank you so much. Danette, would you please call the roll? Chad Baker. Here. Jim Bledsoe. Here. Jeff Cook. Here. Bill Cox. Here. Kurt Holbert. Here. Connie King. Here. Jeff McMillan. Here. Jim Ripley. Here. Bill Swan. Yes, ma'am. Trey Teague. Here. David Watson. Here. Jamie Wat uh, Woodson, I'm sorry. Here. And Harold Cannon. Here. Thank you, ma'am. We have a quorum. Commissioners, uh, you have previously been provided two sets of uh, commission meeting minutes. The first is from our Tullahoma meeting of May 13th of this year. Uh, if there's no objection, we will not read those. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We also uh, had a uh, commission conference call that was publicly noticed that it took place on June the 6th. Those minutes are also included in your packet. Do I have a motion for approval? I have a motion by Commissioner Bledsoe, second by uh, Vice Chair uh, Woodson. I almost said Watson. <laughs> uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. We want to welcome everyone today to this commission meeting. We have a very full agenda uh, with some very serious matters that uh, affect the commission and the wildlife of this state. And that's the good stuff. That's why we're supposed to be here. Mr. Boyd Barker, I saw you, there you are right in front of me. Sorry about that, sir. Uh, you are one of the most faithful attendees next to Ron Crabtree that I know. But thank you for being here and it's great to partner with your department, sir. Uh, it, it really is a privilege. Commissioners, we need to do some agenda modifications and uh, if there are no objection, let me read those modifications. Uh, that I think will help facilitate this meeting. Uh, first, um, as part of the Wildlife Management Committee, uh, Mark Goodland will be introducing three of our new coordinators today. Uh, that will come up uh, while uh, Commissioner Teague is overseeing the meeting. Also, our elk tag drawing, this is more for information. This will actually be live, as it was last year, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, also, in keeping with yesterday's committee action, uh, there will be a discussion at the end of the Wildlife Management Committee's uh, agenda to add a conversation regarding chronic waste disease. We are also going to move the Budget Committee to immediately after the Wildlife Management Committee. This will facilitate us hearing the rules uh, in one rule hearing versus having to break this into uh, at least two hearings. Also on the budget committee, uh, yesterday action was taken by the committee for a, a budget expansion that is not reflected on the agenda. That will be first on the agenda. The second item will actually be the agency budget presentation and our vote related to that. One other change will be at the end of the government relations, uh, let's see, I apologize. At the end of the boating and law enforcement committee's uh, agenda, see bear with me never mind I had some bad information we already have the proclamation for the no wake zone at the end of this meeting I know there's a couple of people from the public that have asked to speak uh, 
unfortunately, because of the agenda, we are asking that those take place at the end of this meeting. We will limit comments uh, to no more than five minutes, give or take. We're, we're a little flexible on that, but if you all could accommodate us, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, are there any comments from the commission before we get into the agenda? Director Carter, do you have any comments? Commissioner Teague is recognized, uh, Chair of the Wildlife Management Committee. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce Mark Goodlin, Chief of Wildlife and Forestry Division. Talk about our elk winners live on Periscope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Today I have the distinct pleasure of introducing three of our new uh, wildlife program, uh, statewide wildlife program leaders. Uh, the first two are from the Wildlife Division. These positions uh, were all filled due to uh, promotions or retirement uh, vacancies. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jamie Federson. Uh, Jamie will serve as our waterfowl program leader. Um, he's a New Hampshire native, but came to us from the um, Florida Wildlife Commission, where he worked for over 15 years on waterfowl and wetlands habitat projects. Most in re recently, he served there as their waterfowl, small game, and fur bearer, fur bearer program leader. He has a master's degree in zoology from the University of Southern Illinois at Carbondale, uh, where he focused on wetlands management. He has a bachelor's degree in wildlife management and wetland ecology from the University of New Hampshire. Uh, he is a veteran, having served two years active duty in the U.S. Army, and we thank him for that service. And he is, uh, and his wife, Nancy, have five children ranging in age from 11 to 26. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce Mr. James Kelly, who will serve uh, as our deer program and wild hog eradication program, program leader. Uh, he's a Pennsylvania native uh, and has a great depth of experience in white-tailed deer management uh, and ecology. Uh, most recently, he served as the big game biometrician and research scientist at the New York State Department of Environment and Conservation. Uh, previous to that, he was the assistant deer program leader uh, with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. He has a master's degree from the University of Georgia, uh, focusing on deer management and a bachelor's degree in biology from Mansfield University in Pennsylvania. And he is wife, and his wife, Jessica, have three children, ages five and under. <laughs> Our next program leader uh, actually serves on uh, Region 4 staff, and this is Dr. Brad Miller, who will serve as our elk program coordinator. Uh, he will be based out of the North Cumberland Wildlife Management Area. And Brad comes to us most recently from the National Wild Turkey Federation, where he served for three years as a regional biologist for Tennessee and North Carolina. Prior to that, uh, he served about six years uh, with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, uh, both as uh, uh, the Assistant Chief of Wildlife and also a Deer Program Coordinator. And in both of those positions, he worked with and supervised their Elk Program Coordinator. Brad is a Knoxville native and received both his bachelor's degree and master's degrees in wildlife and fisheries science from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And his master's focus examined silvicultural and prescribed fire techniques uh, for improving wildlife habitat. And he is, and his wife, April, have uh, two children, ages seven and three. And uh, with that, if it, uh, it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, since uh, announcing the elk winners is next on the agenda, I'll just let Brad take the podium for that. Good morning, everybody. The chairman mentioned the fun stuff, and this is the fun stuff. This is why we manage populations and, and do habitat work, is to be able to provide these opportunities. So it's with great pleasure that I'm able to announce our permit winners from the drawing. You know, it is a, a coveted uh, hunt. In 2009, the first year, there were almost 13,000 applications. Uh, a lot of excitement at that time, but uh, it has not slacked off much. This year, we had over 9,000 people apply for these permits. 
it's been a very successful hunt. Uh, you know, you can see the number harvested through the years. The first uh, tag that was awarded this year was one of our um, donations to a conservation organization. And Mr. Wade Roberts of Leoma, Tennessee, purchased that tag. This will be our first year for an archery hunt, and our permit winners are Dennis Edwards of Brentwood, Trevor Brown of Telford, William Taylor of Murfreesboro, Donald Jacobson of Cleveland, and James Millwood Jr. of Chattanooga. And then we have our firearm elk hunts, which are, uh, include a youth hunt, which is October 22nd and 23rd. Permit winners for the firearm are Kevin Hart of Yuma, Austin Burks of Waynesboro, Timothy Copeland of Crossville, Brian White of Harrison. And our youth permit winner is Jordan Redman of Oakdale. And that are, that's our winners. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's pretty exciting. We've added quite a few new opportunities. Mark. It's pretty exciting. We've added quite a bit more opportunity for the elk hunt. So I didn't get one of the tags, but besides <laughs> that, it's pretty exciting. Okay, we'll begin with the proclamations then. Uh, yesterday I presented Proclamation 16-39 to the Wildlife Committee, and the agency now recommends to the Commission uh, to pass Proclamation 16-39, establishing the Buffalo Ridge Refuge. Mr. Chair, yesterday the committee voted, and uh, I moved to approve Proclamation 16-39. The motion has been made and appropriately seconded. Is there any discussion regarding Proclamation 1639 from the Commission? Any discussion from the public? Hearing none, all in favor of this proclamation say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Proclamation 1369 Buffalo Ridge Refuge passes. Yesterday I presented Proclamation 16-40 to the Wildlife Committee, and the agency now recommends to the Commission to pass Proclamation 16-40, establishing the Middle Fork of the Fork of Deer River Refuge. Thank you. Mr. Chair, yesterday the Wildlife Management Committee voted, and I move to approve Proclamation 16-40. Thank you, Chairman Teague. Uh, motion has been made and appropriately seconded coming from committee. Is there any discussion from the commission? Any discussion from the audience? Let the record show that it is Deer River re Refuge versus what the slide was yesterday. All in favor of Proclamation 16-40 uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Proclamation 16-40 Middle Fork Fork Middle Fork Fork Deer River Refuge passes. <laughs> Yesterday, Assistant but, Director Wilson presented Proclamation 16-45 to the Wildlife Committee, and the agency now recommends to the Commission to pass Proclamation 16-45, Mississippi River Floodwaters Zone Hunting Closure, as amended by the Wildlife Committee. Mr. Chair, yesterday the Wildlife Management Committee voted and um, moved to approve Proclamation 16-45. Thank you, Commissioner Teague. A motion has been made, appropriately seconded, coming from committee. Is there any discussion from the commission? Commissioner Cox, you're recognized. I spoke to um, Alan Peterson last night, and Alan, if you're here, I'd like to ask you a question about, we, we really, I haven't seen the flood maps and where the lines are and when, how often it floods, but there's evidently, at the levels that you have now, can you explain, or do you have a slide or whatever that you might show us what the, how often it reaches this? So we, we, we're, we don't want to get to a point where we're closing the season every other year when it get, when water gets high. I think there's an Excel spreadsheet on there if we can pull it up. Hang on. I think I got it. I'll be able to figure it out. 
Oh, the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, it's okay. I think I've got the slide here. I asked the, the Corps of Engineers to provide us with the data. No, I don't have that. And they gave us 45 years worth of what happens if it gets to 34 feet at Roseville or we could back to get this. Should be. I've got to take my glasses off so I can read. Um, the the spreadsheet they gave us. Let me get it to open. It uh, you can set whatever water level you want to, and then it'll show you how many days it would close. Um, there's a lot of data in here, and I asked them for just October through the middle of January. So that would be the deer season. What, how many days we'd close the, the deer seasons? Um, let's see. Yep, there's one right there. It, it hit, in 82, it hit 35, so it would have been a closure and didn't go down below 32 for, I don't know, what is that, 10 days, 11 days? So once in the 80s, Twice in the 80s, three, or uh, that's 90, so 91. Alan, what was the level this year when it, when it, it was a problem? It, it, it peaked at 42 on January 5th. The closure you guys passed was the 9th and 10th. Um, so what, the, the, what was it a week before? It, it was year unfortunately the the core didn't have their updated data for this this current year, but it was it probably the complaints started really coming in when it was about maybe 38. Wade my Wade Henron uh, lives in Lauderdale County. He's a, a lieutenant in that area. Probably knows what level they re we really started getting the complaints. We, if you if we go to 34, it'll probably close at least once a decade. Some decades, maybe twice. If we go to whatever, however much you want to have it close. Uh, but there was one, if we hit close it at 34, there was, I know there was one year in here where we would have shut the deer season in that zone down for about 30 days, virtually the whole month of December. Um, but probably the real complaints don't start till it gets up to like 38. And wait, am I wrong? So, right. Could you, excuse me, could you come to the microphone and speak, please? I'm sorry. If, uh, I'm afraid the public won't be able to hear you. Wait, Wade Hendren is, is our uh, lieutenant in District uh, 11. Yes, sir. I, I think it's closed uh, six time periods over 45 years from 1971 through 2016, the last one being 2016. And I believe the longest on that spreadsheet may have been 19 days. That was, that was at 34, but then there was a few more days added onto that before right. it dropped down to 32. So I think it was almost 25, 30 days. Probably, that but that's from, now we get some spring waters, but, but October through January during the deer season would have been six time frames. I guess the only question is that, that was brought to my attention is, is it 34 uh, too low and are we going to have to, to prevent or, the, or, or does it need to be a higher number before we get to where the situation we were this year? So it, is that too low or is that just fine or are we going to have it closed? I think that's every a good two, medium years number. Be closed or? I, well, in, in, the, in, the, in this spreadsheet, it has reached – over, has been over the 34 foot level only six times in 45 years. So it won't, I don't foresee it being a reoccurring okay. event every year, every year, every two or three years. Right, okay. it'd, be, it'd be about once or once a decade and every other decade it'd be yes, twice. Sir. Okay. So. Uh, Alan, one more. <clears throat> Is yesterday on the slide y'all had some turkey closures through into that? Well, the, the, the way this proclamation is written, it says big game seasons will close. Turkey, 
in those counties is not that big a problem. The turkeys don't tend to concentrate on a dry hill. They, they're up in a tree when it's flooded. And we've had on the books for years and years and years um, a regulation that says you can't stalk, hunt a turkey from a boat. So it. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm asking is if, if we put that in at 34 feet and say we get some spring floods. Right. Is it going to shut down turkey season? If if the proclamation remains worded as big game, it will shut down turkey season in that zone. But essentially at 34 feet, the turkey hunting comes to a halt anyway because the only way to get to those birds would be by boat, and you can't hunt or stalk them from a boat. So it really doesn't impact turkey, even though they're included as a big game closure. Absolutely. All I need to know, I just, I just didn't want to. Right. I know we have spring floods down there, and I just didn't. I mean, I'm not from West Tennessee, and I don't. We don't, it, have, we and don't it, have any problem up here on the plateau getting rid of water. So. It, yeah, <laughs> it it will close the turkey season more frequently in that zone than it will the deer season because that's when most of our flooding occurs is in the spring. Whether you want to include or just change the wording and say big game or, or deer rather than big game, that's fine. But it really shouldn't impact turkey hunting one way or the other. I think that was an invitation from Commissioner Bledsoe mm -hmm. on turkey hunting, but we'll see. Uh, Commissioner Holbert. Alan, I noticed yesterday in my, Lake County is not included on that turkey closure of hunting from a boat. Is that something you'd recommend? I mean. On the uh, stalking from a boat? Yeah. I thought it was. I can't remember. Could, it could, should have been. I don't know. But anyway, we can get that uh, back up. If it's not, I, I think it probably should find, be added. I, if I can find that slide, I could look at the wording. Is it not? Okay. Um, Wade, do you know why Lake County isn't included in the camp stalking from a boat? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't know that it's been a problem in Lake County. Lake County traditionally has not had a lot of turkeys. Uh, that, there's a few in, in the real foot woods and along the river, but Could, right, yeah. Could you repeat what he just said again? This is it, just he said. It's, he said it, it's where there's birds really won't be affected by by the closure. Uh, anyway, I, I'm strictly. It, uh, my question didn't have anything to do with the close. It, mine is, should it be added for where they cannot hunt from a boat? It's it's an option down That's, the road. I mean, the I'm turkey population it it fluctuates with the the river levels. They get wiped out every other spring or so and then they build back up but um it it certainly could be added at, at some point if if we decided to do that it's not a problem any other comments from the commission any comments from the public hearing none i assume we're ready to vote all in favor of Proclamation 1645, Mississippi River Floodwater Zone Hunting Closure, as presented, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Yesterday I presented Proclamation 16-47 to the Wildlife Committee, and the agency now recommends to the Commission to pass Proclamation 16-47, Hunting Seasons and Bag Limits on Select National Wildlife Refuges and Other Federal Areas which would repeal and replace Proclamation 16-34. Sorry about that. Yesterday, the Wildlife Management Committee voted and a move to approve Proclamation 16-47. Thank you, Chairman T. Uh, we have a motion appropriately seconded by committee. Is there any discussion regarding this from the commission? Any discussion from, discussion from staff or the audience? Hearing none, all in favor of Proclamation 16-47 say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Proclamation 16-47 hunting seasons and bag limits on select national wildlife refuges is approved. Thank you. Yesterday, John Gregory presented Proclamation 16-48 to the Wildlife Committee. The agency now recommends to the commission to pass Proclamation 16-48 Holston Army Ammunition Plant Waterfall Refuge. 
yesterday the Wildlife Management Committee voted and I moved to approve six, Proclamation 16-48. Thank you, Chairman Teague. Motion has been made and appropriately seconded. Is there any discussion from the commission? Any discussion from staff or the public? Hearing none, all in favor of Proclamation 16-48 indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Proclamation 16-48, Holston Army Ammunition Plant Waterfowl Refuge is, is approved. Yeah, yeah, obviously yesterday we had a lengthy conversation about our concerning carcass importation as it pertains to chronic wasting disease. And uh, I think we had made a comment that we were going to open that discussion up today for full commission. 